The best handball players in the country make their way to the best outdoor three-wall park around for a showdown in the desert. The WPH Outdoor Three-Wall Clark Park is the venue as Killian Carroll, Sean Lenning, Luis Cordova, Shorty Ruiz, David Fink, Leo Canales, Dylan Hernandez, and more battle for the title of the WPH Icebreaker Challenge Champion. The men's and women's players battle each other and the Arizona Sun. We're going to find out who can take the heat and who can come out on top. The world players of handball outdoor action starts right now. We are back at Clark Park here in Tucson, Arizona. My name is Dave Vincent alongside David Fink. Beautiful day today as the women's finals are on the hard court. Ashley Muller and Michaela Mitchell. Can't wait for this one, Dave. Ashley doing some, I guess, jump roping without the rope there to warm up. But these two played in the first women's icebreaker, Dave, a few weeks ago. Let's hear that announcement from Abraham Montijo. Serving first from Tucson, Arizona, Ashley Moeller. Without the jump rope this time, the fake and jump rope, the invisible serve rope. From Tucson, Arizona, Michaela Mitchell. She looks menacing. I mean, she's tall. Mm. Menacing in the in the sense that she's. That's complimentary. She, I take it. <laughs> she built. I often call people menacing when I mean it as a high praise. <laughs> I mean it as a complete compliment. No, I, I, I took it that way. Ashley jumped out to a 21 to 0 lead in their first, won, won that first game 21 0. Right. In the first women's icebreaker. The second game was very competitive. I'm expecting to see that today. Ashley starts off with a nice overhand lob ace. Well, that's sort of like what Michaela did to Ashley in game number two of that match. Now kind of given some of the taste of your own medicine. Two straight ace serves here for Ashley Muller. Ashley defeating Tracy Davis in a tiebreaker to make the final here. That was a very good match, Dave. And Michaela defeating the current three-wall national champion and former world one-wall champion Danielle Daskalakis. Yeah, That's got to be one of the biggest upsets in the history of the sport. Yeah, she's the Cinderella story of this tournament, no doubt. Michaela has only been playing for five years. Danielle was racking up world championship wins five years ago. Yeah. So for her to come in here and beat Danielle, beat her in two games. What does that say about playing on your home court? Is there an advantage? I don't think so. And we've done a lot of research on the home court winners, and it has not proven to be... A difference maker. I mean, she's only lived in Tucson for what less than a year, mm -hmm. and she. This is probably the most handball outdoor that she's ever played in her life. I'd say the same for just about everyone who's living in Tucson. No one in Tucson really played three well up until these courts were built. Look at this serve right here. Another ace. Look how perfect that is. I don't care who you are, you're not getting that ball back, not unless you cut that off or run in. That's a very hard ball to get back and another ace from Ashley Moeller here. 6-0 and I don't know that Michaela's hit more than three shots back to the wall so far in this game. Oh, I like that. This is what we saw in the first women's icebreaker, Dave. Ashley was flawless in the first game. Made zero errors in that 21-0 first game blowout. You have to say these two are part of handball's top five power couples. Both their fiancés, top ten pros. Michaela engaged to Sam Esser, who's part of the future of the sport, and Ashley Muller engaged to Shorty Ruiz, both watching here. Court side. Shorty's also the future of the sport. Nine zero, Dave. Now who's more nervous right now? The players or their fiancés? Another ace there for Dr. Ash. I think the fiancés are more worried. These these two women are very laid back as Michaela calls a timeout. I'll tell you, Michaela was not laid back in the first game, in the first icebreaker came in very nervous and it doesn't seem like those nerves have dissipated here. 
You know, Ashley's hitting a lot of great serves, but 11 0. 11 0. Coming off of a two game win against Daniel Dasklakic, she can't even get in the server's box here. Well, she might get in it here if she can keep Ashley in the back court. Oh, my goodness. Another point for Ashley. Just strokes that soft I ace. Ashley is left. such a good athlete, Dave. You can see the way she can read the ball. She's very economical with her steps. Knows exactly where to be. That ball made it. Look at that power and control. The overhand fist that we've seen Ashley hit so often in four wall. It's even more effective here, Dave. Wouldn't you say that's your signature shot? Absolutely. 13-0, Dave? Yeah, I... This game is the 15. I'll make that 14-0 to zero here. So Ashley's trying to serve out, right? She's... Has Michaela served? Here? I don't recall that. I don't think so. It's all been one serve. Trying to avoid her second donut. There's only been one donut in icebreaker history. Michaela trying to avoid... Wow, and there's the side out. The second. Look where this ball hits. Just in. And that's, that's what the, you have to do against Dr. Ash. You've got to hit the lines to have any chance. This is the first side out of the whole match so far for Michaela. And a point, possibly. And she gets that first point. Michaela serving the same serve to Ashley that Ashley's already recorded nine aces with. Make that two aces now for Michaela. We saw Michaela use that deep overhand serve to the right against Danielle, now going to the left against Ashley. Goes to that well one more time, Dave, and comes up short. Michaela, a former volleyball player. Ashley, of course, a former collegiate softball player. This is best two out of three to 15, Breaker. Also to 15, or is it to 11, Dave? That's the 15 as well. Okay. Oh, I like that. That ball kind of feathers back to the right, going over the top was Michaela with a little reverse. If you're Ashley here, Dave, are you starting to get worried? No, but it's the point where you start trying to figure out how to defend the serve because game number two is going to be more of that. Okay. I don't think you get worried at this point. She just needs one serve and one point. And she has that shot, that deep underhand paddle. Momentum can switch very quickly out here. That's an overhand crack serve. How many aces did we see in that game number one? I mean, 11, 12? That was 14 by my count. Unbelievable. Game number two coming up next. It's Ashley Moeller defeating Michaela Mitchell in game number one of this Icebreaker Challenge Women's Final at Clark Park in Tucson, Arizona with the WPH. And we're back for game number two here. On a beautiful Saturday, it was Ashley Moeller taking game number one, 15 to five against Michaela Mitchell. Michaela gets that first serve. Now remember, Ashley scored 14 straight points on that initial serve before Michaela scored five unanswered. And that's an unforced there. That does not go down as an ace. Pretty easy shot there for Ashley, who had Michaela pinned on the right. You really want that serve to bounce if you're the server, because if your opponent takes it out of the air, just don't have much time to react, and you're stuck a little bit too close to the front wall. Oh, I like that. I like it when we have a person calling the score. I think the players are actually refing their own match, but then a player is calling the score. Is that how it works? Yes. And I don't mind that. I think it's pretty cool. Still building that camaraderie, 
right? <laughs> Why do you I laugh? Wasn't, I wasn't going there with that. <laughs> I just, I mean. Isn't that what it does? <laughs> I've I mean, seen it. I've seen players <laughs> making dinner reservations in the middle of matches. Because, because of the. Their, yeah, the camaraderie. Yes, thank and, you. Guys who weren't even friends and ladies before a match actually become friends talking about close calls. Well, that's just how it works. That was the whole goal. I don't know how you had the foresight. <laughs> I never, said at one it's point. It's never been done before, and you think. <laughs> I, I said at one point, well, we can't find refs, so we might as well just ref our own. And you said, no. <laughs> I want to ref our own, even when we had refs, because of that said camaraderie. Yep. You wouldn't think that something like that that's never been done before had taken off so much, taken off so well, so much, so easily. As it does <laughs> Seamlessly. At our, yeah, at our events. And we'll continue to do so, by the way. In all fairness, in nine years of refing our own, I've only seen one argument, and that was with Marcos Chavez, so that doesn't even count. <laughs> why, why does it not count? <laughs> I'm just sorry. You can draw your own conclusions okay. there. Right. Yeah. Uh oh. Off the facade. Now we're seeing a little bit more rallies here as opposed to that ace infected hmm. first game that we had. 14 aces. Yeah. Out of a combined 20 points. Right. I mean, that's. That's a pretty good stat, Dave. I know that's going to make your stat of the day on Saturday or Sunday, excuse me. Here, though, we're seeing a lot more rallies and a lot less aces. That was a very tough serve. And that's a beautiful first strike kill here with the left. I mean, is she going for that shot, Dave? I think so. And she looks like she goes over the top of it and just sort of feathers it down. Oh, what a shot. It is a good shot. We haven't seen either of these ladies attempt a sidearm serve, all overhand serves. Set up for Ashley. She's pretty good with that shot, and she takes it right down with a looks like a fist, Dave. I thought this was an open hand, but Let's we'll see. see. Oh, it is. is definitely open hand. Michaela not only has her fiance out here, but also the most state maniacs, Dave, made the trip to support her in this event. I mean, what are there, seven, eight of them out here? Most state national champions making the trip from Springfield. Here's where that camaraderie kicks in. I don't think these ladies were sure if that ball was in. Yeah, that's an interesting one. We saw the replay. It looked good initially, and then it looked out on the replay, but I'd like to see it one more time. He saw Ashley's face after the ball hit, like, uh-oh, I just made a mistake because that ball's in. Mm -hmm. But then she somehow won the argument out mm. of that. We don't call them arguments. We call them discussions. Well, that's mean. what we were aiming for yeah. when we developed that player ref their own match in a pro tournament decided by money and <laughs> ranking points. <laughs> yep. Just like it was planned. <laughs> and it doesn't take much to hit balls long in this court. It's about 104 degrees inside that court. And you just catch one solidly, you know, two thirds of the way up on the front wall and it's most likely gonna sail out. Yeah, the ball's hot, the floor's hot, the walls are hot, and then we're at a pretty high elevation here. A lot of people don't realize it, but Arizona is uh, is is high country. We're at about, this court right here is about 2,900 feet mm. above sea level. Okay. I mean, I know it's not pushing the 4,000s where it gets you, you know, your blood and your heart and your oxygen are freaking out, but it still affects people. Then you throw this wind in, Dave. The wind actually feels good and does not affect the ball. The ball is heavy enough that it's not affected by the wind. Well, you don't hit it as slow as I do. 
Now we're I've, seeing some front court play there. Ashley now just eight points from winning her second icebreaker. Just been totally in control here. Up 7-3. Led 14-0 in game one. And this one's just about over, I would say, Dave. There's some of those Mo State maniacs now. They're very superstitious, this group, Dave. In which way? Well, one of them told me Michaela was trailing against Danielle. He went and stood behind the tree. She came back and won, and now he's just going to watch the whole match from behind the tree. <laughs> he told me I can only see about a third of the court, but it's working. That sounds like my position on my honeymoon night. Hmm. The rest of the honeymoon was behind, from watching from behind the tree. Okay. Just to be clear, that was not a camp out either. No. Yeah. Okay. No. That was at a 7 Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> now you're starting to see a couple more aces. We saw one in the last set when Ashley was serving. This is why I always tell you not to etch too soon, Dave. I see you down there with the, the brick where you etch in all the icebreaker champions. There's another point here. Is that an unforced error, or do you call that an ace? That was an unforced error. Okay. If you're taking the ball out of the air on the serve and you can't return it, it's definitely an unforced error. See, there's another one. That Just one. no reason to not be able to return that ball. You've got the front wall is 20 feet high. 400 square feet of front wall. And there's an, oh, I thought you were going to miss that. Good power right there from Ashley. Best rally of the match. Michaela had her chance early in that rally to hit a winning shot with Ashley stuck in the front court, but ultimately wins it with a nice drive down the left. Now, we talked about the most state maniacs. Unfortunately, Dave, you aren't, but I am. Ashley brings her own fan club. She's got her daughter, Scarlett Shorty. Plus, she is just a fan favorite anywhere she plays in Tucson. Really cool demeanor. She's a leader. Locals look up to her. She's an organizer. She doesn't drop the ball. Uh, she's really loved here. And she loves the sport as much as anybody I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've been around a lot of them. Okay. It's hard for the two th Tucson locals, though, because Michaela's now a Tucson resident. They like her a lot as well. That's why you're not hearing that thunderous roar after some of these rallies, Dave. The fans here really like both players. There's not much to dislike. Did I say that right? Yes. Yeah. It was a double negative that worked. Did I say that right? Uh, no. Okay. I was trying to use that. The yes part was right. Okay. Because you agreed with me. Seven straight points here for Michaela, who looked to be on the brink of defeat, now looks to be closing in on forcing a third game. I mean, besides cutting down her errors, what are you seeing here that she's doing differently? I mean, her serves have gotten her some points, some quick points. Oof. Well, Michaela is kind of grinding now. She's hanging in these rallies, finding a way to return the ball with her deep left, and that's out. That's another one of those 2,900 square or altitude shots. Right. With the the hot ball and pavement. Uh, that ball also had a little bit of spin off that fist too. Mm -hmm. it spun out of that front wall and then kept gathering on the side wall. Well, you can actually hit a fist shot below the WPH outdoor sign and still hit it out. Yeah. There's I like a that ceiling shot. ball. That's a good shot. And that's into the fence. So another point here for Michaela. And you get a hot day like this, Dave. And if you can grind, keep rallies alive, you will start to force some errors. Nice return there from Ashley. We haven't seen a lot of instructional or 
talk about the return of serve in three wall, but I think that high two wall deep return is probably the most effective. Gives you time to get into the point and also makes for a tough kill shot opportunity for the server. That ball looked like it was long on the serve. I agree with you on that. Perhaps a and future see, coaching center too. coming up on that. Michaela knew that was long as well. She said, it's your call. Okay. But yeah, I like that. That's a good point. That uh, It gives you a chance as a, as a return of serve person to come back into the middle carpet, right? And if, you're, if the server is going to take that ball off the side wall from 10 feet behind the short line, hit a fly kill, kill shot, you just have to tip your hat. Right. There's nothing more you can really do than return the ball high and deep off the side wall. The odds are in your favor to see another shot. Easy for us to say here, Dave, in our windswept booth. Wasn't Ashley up seven to three? Yes, ten straight points for Michaela. That's a good shot for Muller. But you see Michaela forcing Ashley to hit another ball there. Ashley clips the side wall and still has to come in and hit a pretty tough on the run paddle kill. I like that serve. Oh, that was an amazing serve. If you were going to draw an X on the court, Dave, that's exactly where you'd want to land it. Sneak one of those down the right. All can be very effective, too. And we've seen that quite a bit. Players running in. Seems like you've got just a point blank opportunity, and then you catch a little bit too much of it. And the ball is four or five feet out. We saw Killian do that, David, a big moment against Leo Canales mm. in his quarterfinal match. It looked like it would cost him the game, but he ended up winning it anyway. Was that in, Dave? It was so very close. Then again, the replay has proven me wrong every single time. I've noticed you only use instant replays for one player on those long serves, and I'm not mentioning names. Well, if a player... Uh, wins a point when they shouldn't have. Mm. I play the replay 12 times in a row. Okay. <laughs> so that's only happened with one player then. Well, what you're much, saying. Pretty much okay. only one. <laughs> Just, I know the players watch the videos. Uh -huh. That's my way of saying cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> But I show back and forth, mm -hmm. slow mo. When you say twelve times, that doesn't include going back and forth. That's no, just... I, it's like eat or eat or back. You know, you have to really show the play. Yeah. Really show the slow mo. Right. Break it down. Mm -hmm. Stop frame, freeze it, rewind. Analyze it. it. Yeah. Now she's going for that X that she's marked. She comes out here with chalk, Dave two hours before the tournament starts. Marks her spots. Now, you can't see them. That's because Michaela came into the court and scuffed them out. Ashley would definitely like that shot back. Trying to close in on a victory here. Yeah, time's running out. She could be serving at 11 to 13 here instead. Or at least in a rally. Yeah. Now, that's a tough serve. Thought that that serve might go out the door, but instead it clips the back of the side wall there around the number three. It gives Ashley a pretty good look at the return. That's the first sidearm serve we've seen, Dave, and he was not effective at all. That was a I good mean, return, though, for Michaela. Well, I mean, the serve just didn't put Michaela under any pressure. If you're hitting your second shot of the rally, falling backwards from 10 feet behind the back line. You've not hit a good serve. Great camera work here from Che Lowenstein, who did work with us with ESPN for many years. Brought him back from Portland. He was so happy to get out of Portland, to come down to Arizona. I mean, you talk about Ashley loving handball. I think Che might love handball more than anyone, Dave. Yeah, he, he certainly has a love of life. That guy. Yeah. But good work. Always. 
I mean, put put this together for us. It's so nice. I mean, we take it for granted, but I mean, look how clean and he's following the players around here, and you know, as Michaela wins and shakes Ashley's hand, there's there's Shay just following her right off the court. Good Ashley work. thought she'd be following in the footsteps to segue from her first icebreaker win as she led 7-3 in this game after winning game one, but Michaela answered 10-0 run to go up 13-7, held off Dr. Ashley late, and now we're going to see a third game. Ashley Muller wins game number one 15-5, loses game two 10-15 against Michaela Mitchell. Here is game number three, the tiebreaker with Ashley Muller getting that first serve. She scored more points. She serves first. And a smile on both of their faces. Well, they're having a great time. Either way, they both had a great tournament. Both defeating three wall national champions in the semifinals. Now here they are in a tiebreaker. This is really the best tournament, the biggest tournament we've seen since the pandemic started 12 months ago. You know, and I forgot how great some of the great tournaments were. This one seems like it's right up there. I, I can't it's remember some, ever. It, it's in, not really a tournament. It's an invite. Right. But nonetheless, it has this amazing feel to it. Yeah, there's a great energy here. And you've got the commish, Scott Cleveland and Jim Verhage on the grill. Everyone's out here socially distancing, having a great time. Players are refing their own matches. Building that camaraderie. Yeah, because if you can't do it at the food court, mm -hmm. you can do it on the court. Right. That's what I always I've seen say. less camaraderie at the food court as one player thought the commish ran out of tacos. Nope. Well, Bad. for that split second, he was taking a close look at the player in front of him who was, well, I shouldn't say player, organizer in front of him who had nine tacos. <laughs> wow. And was thinking that there's a 10th and 11th coming? But there wasn't. Oh, no. He was eyeing down that organizer's plate. But the commission is always prepared, Dave, as is the con man, Jim. Can we say his name on video? No. I didn't think so. I mean, you can, but you're going to get a visit from <laughs> a couple of uh, his I was former expecting, associates. Yeah, I, I thought I might be seeing some associates I after like bringing that. up his name. That ball would have been in. There's a party ball. Well, this is still tough to get back. Ooh, where'd that power come from? Both look players. at how exhausted. Yeah. Now, Michaela used the sidewall here to actually bring this ball down, because if that doesn't hit the sidewall, it's onto the 16th hole, Randolph. She was hitting it at a certain pace the whole rally and all mm. of a sudden she popped well that was that an overhand fish. fist and she really loaded up her legs on that one she said she was a volleyball player right so she right. went for that flying spike I'm surprised that Michaela continues to hit the side ball with that overhand serve there's another kill shot here it's a good shot good angle too now it's Michaela up 4-0. That's a good serve. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you can't make those errors. Not in the tiebreaker. There's, Ashley had a lot of options there. One of them was not hitting the ball off the side of your thumb on a fish shot. One thing the amazing camera work of Shea cannot reveal, Dave, is just how exhausting this game is to play. And you have to take that into account when you see some of these errors as Michaela now races to a 6-0 to zero third game lead here. Did you see that? Uh... Is that the only water in Tucson? <laughs> it is. Actually, I was trying to bathe in it earlier. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Previous shot was an amazing kill shot from Michaela. Mm -hmm. 
before you interrupted about the water. So I, How could I not? I mean, it is a rare sight. Right. If it wasn't that rare, I wouldn't have done it. It's like you know me. I stay on message. It's like seeing a lawn in Tucson that has grass on it. Mm. Like real fresh green wow. grass. Mm. When was the last time you saw that? Never, right? No. Yeah, well, no. that's about as rare as seeing that water standing there. I'm surprised somebody wasn't trying to bottle that. <laughs> I forgot how to pronounce water for about uh, six months last year. Well, that was the last time it rained. And there's that 2,900 footer. It's very difficult, Dave, to judge whether that ball is going to land in or out. You see so many players leave balls that land in and then hit balls that are probably going to be out. Right. I'm not so sure why it's so difficult, but it is. Well, I always like what Vern Roberts said was if you are questioning it, just hit it. Right. That takes care of the problem. But there are times when you're just so sure it's going to be out and it lands a foot in. Yeah, that is a weird feeling. And then you call it out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I knew. No, no, no. I played the replay on that uh -huh. if you do it multiple yeah. times to prove that you're wrong. As the great Dion Warwick once said, Yeah, now, now we're talking. That's what friends are for. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like this is starting to become about me. And it shouldn't. Because this is just a phenomenal tiebreaker. But I will say, since it has become, I tell whoever I'm playing, you call whatever you want. I'm happy with whatever you call. <laughs> yeah, until you call it. <laughs> I mean... And then I'm going to sort of half angrily try to change it with the referee and trying to get public opinion with eyebrow nods and eyebrow nods <laughs> you saw that right you saw it? no i'm happy with whatever you call you saw right. it huh no no don't touch that ball i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it well i'm helping people they're just trying to enjoy a match <laughs> Now, there is cash in this tournament. This is the women's finals. No ranking points, but in future events, if players are to continue to play as we have these Oh, ice really? Because I have a full icebreaker ranking system okay, well then, all set. Okay, well, then there is ranking points. Thank you. But I was going to say that we would use some of the results from for the rankings, obviously. Well, icebreaker rankings. Yeah. Yeah. Which will be the only rankings, because I can't see us counting events from two years ago. I mean, can yeah, you? that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. look at that shot from Michaela. And Ashley misses that? Dave. Michaela was 50 feet behind Ashley and 60 feet behind the wall. You have to circle that on your scorecard. Uh-oh. That makes it. shot there for Michaela. Michaela doesn't really use the corners, Dave. She seems to like the front wall, side wall kill. I guess it's intentional because she's hit a bunch of those. We talk about the return of serve, the high two wall shot, but also if you can hit the ball overhand and make it bounce in front of the server, so the ball is coming up around shoulder height. That's also very effective. Hard to do. Another good serve is that overhand power serve. That was the best point of the match for Ashley, who hit a superb fly shot and then follows it up with a tomahawk fist pass. Now watch this great fly shot from Ashley. Not a kill. Pushes Michaela to her right, and now Michaela's completely out of position. Yeah, that's smart right there. Just that's just great handball. It was a great serve that set it all up too. So oh. three perfect shots there from Dr. Ash. Ashley with eyes in the back of her head, knowing exactly where Michaela was coming. Right. 
decided to pop it right back in the same place. And now that is an unforced area there for Michaela, who had a pretty nice look at that return. Try to use a fist. If she would have went open hand, maybe a better chance at it. I think if an overhand serve bounces and hits into the side wall, if you're not able to return that, it's definitely an unforced air. 7-6 here. Going to 15, win by two, Dave. Don't forget that play where Michaela was back 50 feet. Mm. Ashley was up front and serving, mm. which would have given her the sixth point back then. Okay. Or I should say maybe the fifth point back then, and Michaela had only six at that point. So it's just still maybe one of those moments that uh, could have changed this match. Like That's that. a great serve. Sneaky. And Ashley plays that point beautifully. She's patient with that return of serve, lets it bounce in front of her, and then drives it down the left wall after Michaela is running diagonally from the back right. That one, an ace, not an unforced air, even though it did clip the side wall. But that slid down the side wall, got behind Michaela, made for a very tough return. Ashley, go back to the right here. No. Wow. Beautiful shot. Now, some fans may be wondering why these ladies aren't trying to serve the ball out the door. Well, that side wall comes back, what, four feet, Dave? Yep. Very, very difficult to get the ball out the door without clipping the side wall just don't have the right angle unless you hit it perfectly. The perfect height with the perfect amount of power. This would unquestionably be, be the biggest title of Michaela's career. She's never really played events outside of the Midwest where she would compete in the Bear Bash and other events, Dave, in that area. She's only played in one women's race stop Losing in the first round there. Now Ashley, who trailed 6-0, leads 9-7. You can't still be thinking about that shot she missed, Dave, when Michaela was 50 feet back, are you? Well, it would be 10-6. But you're right. I, I'm not thinking of it. No. Look at that shot. Oh, amazing. That's the kind of shot Michaela is going to look back on and say, I wish I hadn't even gone for that. Those take the most energy, the ones you have no chance to return. I let all of those go. Yeah. I mean all of them. Right. Well, I just go back and try and get my hand on it so I don't have to run back behind the canopy another 100 feet. Not me. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I, but I walk. There's that serve. Ooh. And that's the thing. If you are able to get it out the door, generally it's because the ball is out. Now that was out. Uh-oh. That was close, too. What a second serve. It's a perfect second serve. Nice power. Oh, well, Mi Michaela played that point very well. A lot of great overhand drives. And Dave, Michaela hits a great second serve there, just a couple of inches from the back line. And I know, you know, when you're hitting a second serve, particularly when there's pressure, that court feels very small. Oh, yeah. You start to ask yourself, Where, how can I get this in? So it's not over the back line and it gets over the short line. And if you have that mentality, usually you end up hitting it in the middle of the court and have no chance to win the rally. Or you don't hit it in the court. That too. I've seen a lot of people just say, I can't get it into that square. Right. If I, you know, if it's crunch time and I have a second serve, I just can't do it. It's strange. It's a real huge mental block. I think you go even more aggressive on that second serve. Just pretend it's a first serve and you really need an ace. Now we're together at 10 here. Now it's a race to five, win by two.
That's probably a smart timeout for Ashley Muller. She wins game number one, 15 to five, lose game number two, 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. Here she was up nine to seven and then 10 to seven, right? 10 to well, eight. Remember down six to zero as right. well. And now Michaela's back up 11 to 10. And mm -hmm. as we quickly get back into it here, it's a tiebreaker going to 15, as you said, win by two. I think that could come into play here. I'd be surprised if it didn't. Oh, I like that. Good timeout. Probably Ashley's best shot of the match there. Inside out, right corner kill. Can't remember seeing many sidewall first kills in this match. And she pulled it out there at a big moment. That was long, but that was really close. Wow, what a second serve. Ashley gets that one out the door to tie this game at 11. You know, Dave, occasionally out here, and we're talking about every 100 shots or maybe more, there is a weird bounce in the middle of the floors out here, mm. or even on the front wall. Mm. A crack or a little tiny pebble. We haven't seen much of that in these pro matches. Beautiful shot. Michaela was all twisted around there. Well, it was been difficult for Ashley to go to the right there because her momentum was carrying her to the left, so she powers it right at Michaela's feet. Uses that leverage of moving to the left to blast it back to the left. Michaela is exhausted here. And Ashley moves right across her there. Big setup. She does not take that one. David, that, is that enough? I don't know. I mean, outdoors it seems like it's more acceptable, but when you see it, you feel it. Right? Like, you, it just feels wrong when you see that shot. Someone screaming in front of you like that. It's, it's so brief, though, and mm -hmm. these guys are pro players, so it probably doesn't affect them. But for some reason, as a viewer, you look at it and go, eee. I think it works to your advantage when you're hitting because now you know exactly where your opponent is. They've moved in front of you to your right. So now you know you've got the left side open. So I don't think it's an issue. When I'm in the court playing and that happens, I don't feel it at all. But right. when I see it as a spectator, it really kind of sticks out. Oh, Ashley just caught in no man's land there. That's a huge shot because if Michaela doesn't win that rally, she's down match point. Now serving at 11-13. I know you said she's exhausted, Dave, but she's four points from this title. Oh, she, there was a timeout after oh I said that. Oh, my gosh. That was a perfect serve. That's the out-the-door incredible ace. Now, the, to defend that, you have to actually just run in and, and catch right. that on a short hop or catch it before it hits the ground, You right? have to read that. That's so As tough she to hits do. It. Yes. And there's Ashley Reed. There's it. another one. Even better. I like that one a lot more. Incredible. Two straight aces. Ashley doesn't even get her hand on either of those serves. Well, it looks like Ashley played that correctly. She took a couple steps in, was going to cut it off, and then Michaela had the perfect serve to defend that. Another good one, Dave. I can't believe it. When she needed it most. Three straight aces down the left sets up match point for Michaela. And Ashley's going to make this long walk. And I can assure you this feels like an eternity. Walking 40 feet and back into court number two. I don't know if that's the Jeff Helam court, Dave, but that's a long walk when you're facing match point. Well, a lot of thoughts going through your mind. If it's not the Jeff Helam one, it's a long walk. Anytime Jeff is involved, and it doesn't really matter because Michaela Mitchell just takes down Ashley Moeller. And the Cinderella story is here. Michaela's just got to be in shock right now. Down 13 to 11. She wins the last four points without having to hit one shot after the serve. Four straight unreturned serves to close out the biggest championship of her career. Unbelievable win for Michaela Mitchell. She gets her first title and a yellow jersey with the World Players of Handball. We have her courtside. You got yourself into that first game and then you dominated the second game. What was the difference then? I don't know, I just pushed. I mean, I knew it was the, the last game and I just kind of had to give it all I had. Um, it was tough in this heat too, but I just tried to get good shots. I tried to keep it away from, from, her, uh, from her right to shoot and just tried to keep it deep. And yeah, and my serves, I think my serves got a lot better as the game went on too, so that helped a lot. Well, you mentioned your serve and it just seemed like you could consistently put the ball one inch from the back line, either to the right or left, and that gave Danielle so many problems. And also, Ashley, you ran out 
the, the tiebreak with five straight points, yeah. mostly off those serves. What, how do you develop that serve? I used to be a volleyball player, so I think that has helped a lot. I love my overhand shot. I think it's helped me develop in handball for sure. Um, so, you know, I always, when I first started, that was always what helped me get points when I first started three wall was that serve. And I just kind of keep developing it. Um, I don't play a lot of lefties, so Danielle, that was the first time I really did the, the right lob, um, and it seemed to work out well. <laughs> so talk about what this means to you, because you take out the current national champion in your first match. You beat a former national champion to win in your second match. You've never qualified yet on the women's race. I mean, this is an incredible story. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it's awesome. I feel overwhelmed, and I'm just, I'm really, it's awesome. I mean, there's so many good players out here in Tucson, and I think that's really helped me develop my game. I didn't really play much three wall until I came out here, and yeah, it's, uh, I'm really happy about it today. I mean, we all saw your talent in that second game of the icebreaker when, you know, you lost the first game yeah. and then you came back, the second game was very close, and it just seems like you've kind of picked up on that momentum and kept it going because your game is as strong as anyone's that I've ever seen <laughs> out here. Thanks, yeah, it's, uh, I've been working really hard. I think watching that, uh, Rewatching that game, I knew what to work on and uh, I kept pushing myself, doing other things outside of handball too, just to get in good shape. And I think that helped, especially today, because the, the heat really uh, takes a lot out of you. So yeah, it felt good. I felt a lot better and yep, just, keep in, just keep pushing. Well, you've got the belt now, the championship belt for the women's. And I know that winning is just gonna add more motivation. So we're looking forward to seeing you again. Played great today, congratulations. Thank you, thanks yeah. so much for having me out here. Of course. <laughs>